What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. We have some big things to talk about today as stocks blasted to the upside. A lot of growth stocks soared up, but some stocks like Walmart had terrible days. Walmart actually had its worst day since 1987. So we're going to talk a lot about this and other great stocks to buy right now. Warren Buffett's making some big news, so make sure to uh, stick around to the end. And Tom, let's get right into it. Yeah, Mike, a lot of stocks are at great buying levels right now. You know, there's stocks at massive discounts. It looks like Walmart is now at a pretty big discount. Look at, we were just at highs of 160 over the past couple months. Now we're sitting at lows of $130 after this brutal earnings report. I will say the report wasn't terrible. They did actually do okay. Um, as we can see here, they missed their earnings expectations for the fiscal, fiscal first quarter. But the overall thing was their EPS, if we scroll down here, ended up coming in at 1.30 adjusted versus a 1.48 expectation. And But their revenue actually beat by two and a half, almost $3 billion here. They came in at 141.57 billion versus 138.94 billion expected. You can see though that their net income for the quarter fell uh, down to 2.05 billion, which is never good. And they also just had a lot of other numbers that, we're not good altogether, Mike. And they also reported supply chain issues and they said inflation is really hurting them right now. So and at the end here, like he says right here, their bottom line was just not meeting expectations. Yeah, and then also rising uh, fuel prices, higher inventory and overstaffing definitely hurt some too, especially on that bottom line. So that was interesting. And I feel like Walmart is falling so much because it's typically seen as like a safety stock, especially in times of high inflation and even in recessions. It held up a, it held up very well in, in previous recessions. So a lot of people flock to it. And to see that their bottom line is taking a hit is definitely a little bit worrying, but it should be all good for the long term though. But Tom, Walmart was one of the few stocks that were actually in the red today. It was actually a really green day across many different industries. Yeah, it really was. And Warren Buffett really helped fuel this this morning. He actually announced a lot of positions in Citigroup, Paramount, and a whole bunch of other stocks here. So we can see Citigroup was up 7.5%. And this really bled into all the bank stocks. JP Morgan was flying up along with Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and uh, even Goldman Sachs. So the bank stocks were flying. There's, a, there's an amazing article here on Yahoo that shows all of Warren Buffett uh, pretty much all of his positions that he took today. So he opened up positions in Ally Financial, Markle, HP, which is awesome, uh, Selenese. He even got into RH and even Formula One, which is interesting. He kind of upped his uh, upped his stake in that. He also even added shares of Activision Blizzard. So he's been getting into a lot of stuff. You can see here, though, he did drop Wells Fargo, AbbVie, and BMY, which is not good. But in the end, though, Mike, a lot of these stocks that he bought – we're really flying up and he made a, made some pretty big moves here over the past couple of quarters. But keep in mind, guys, that he made these moves as of March 31st. So keep that in mind. You know, obviously these comp, uh, these he, these funds and stuff like that, they always report a couple months later, which in, in the end, that does kind of suck for us. But still, at least it made the stocks move today. Exactly. So Citigroup in Paramount were the top ones I was watching. Paramount, ticker symbol P-A-R-A, -A, is up over 15% today, and it is just blasting up. Uh, this stock was the same stock that was involved with the Archegos scandal just uh, last year. So we could see that giant run up and uh, fall right back down. But yeah, I mean, this one's been wild, but it's nice to see Buffett really buying the dip because, you know, even though he's not necessarily buying all the stocks I am, it is nice to see him, you know, buying given all of the relatively scary economic conditions that are out there right now. Yeah, especially big banks, in my opinion, you know, like with him picking up Citigroup, that's amazing. I know he did cut Wells Fargo, but to see him starting to pick up Citigroup is great. And he also holds a few other banks like Bank of America and a couple others. So it's awesome to see these banks flying back up. Mike, banks are at a huge discount, actually. Like, look at Citigroup. It had highs of $80 just around a year ago. Now we're sitting at lows of $45.40 and we're sitting at like $50 today. So it's insane to see how low these banks have been really running down. I know just about every stock lately, though, has been 
falling to some drastic levels. But if you guys are interested in dip buying some stocks right now, you know, Warren Buffett's getting in and he's a pretty influential guy to follow sometimes. Oh yeah. And that's part of the reason these stocks are booming, just like you said. So great stuff there, Tom. I know Powell spoke today. Uh, fill us in. What happened? Yeah, so he pretty much reiterated that the Fed is going to keep raising rates until inflation starts coming down. And initially, Mike, when he started speaking, the market took a bit of a downturn here. You know, the, the SPY fell all the way down to like the 404 support. Then we started blasting right back up here at the end of the day. And it looks like the market kind of kicked the news the, to the curb. So at the end, you know, the market's doing pretty well here. Um, he did say uh, in his own words, if that involves moving past broadly understood levels of neutral, we won't hesitate to do that. So keep in mind that they're targeting inflation at like two to 2.5%. But he's saying if inflation keeps going higher, they might have to raise it at a faster pace or raise it higher. So just keep that in mind. They're going to do everything they can to bring it back down. And maybe that's why the market's going up, Mike. I know that lately uh, inflation has been going to levels of like 1984. We might even be getting into the 70s over the next couple months. So We'll have to see what happens, but it was definitely pretty influential when he talked today. The market did have a pretty big reaction there, I will say. That was a pretty big intraday sell-off. Righty. And then I know there was also some pretty interesting news with Elon Musk and Twitter and Joe Biden. So what's going on there? Yeah, this is actually pretty funny. We can see Tesla's stock was up 5.1% today. Uh, Twitter's stock was actually up a little bit too. But we actually talked a lot yesterday about Jeff Bezos blasting the White House over their inflation reports and just everything that they've been going back and forth about. And today, Elon Musk started blasting Joe Biden, which is interesting. So we can see it in an interview this week. He said that it's hard to tell what Biden is doing, to be totally frank. And he said the real president is whoever controls the teleprompter. The path to power is the path to the teleprompter. I do feel like if somebody were to accidentally lean on the teleprompter, it's going to be like Anchorman, he said. So if you guys haven't seen that scene from Anchorman, go look it up. It is definitely a funny scene. But man, he's really hitting the president hard here, pretty much saying he, he doesn't know what he's doing and all these other things. So it's, uh, it's not good. He also said the administration doesn't seem to get a lot done. And, you know, like I said, this comes one day after Bezos was criticizing Biden. So it seems like the uh, billionaires are going against Biden here. It, very interesting. And then I know Musk even had some news with the SEC and uh, Twitter, right? Yeah, he did. He actually called on the SEC to evaluate uh, the Twitter user numbers. He actually said, hello at SEC Gov, anybody home? And he even posted a, a poll on Twitter. So here's the poll. He says, Twitter claims that uh, more than 95% of daily active users are real, unique humans. Does anybody have that experience? Because there's so many in, there's so many instances on Twitter and all these social media websites where there's so many bots and things like that running all over the place. And even on YouTube, Mike, like they're all over in the comment section. So it's pretty crazy to see him starting to talk about these bots even more. But yeah, he called on the SEC to start investigating it because, you know, that does make a big difference. It's almost like having fraudulent numbers if they're trying to say those are real people. Yeah, exactly. So for those of you who don't know, the Elon Musk slash Twitter deal is on hold right now because Elon wants to evaluate how many of Twitter's users are bots versus real people. So that's been a big thing over the past week or so, especially in Twitter stock fell so much from where it was just like a week or two ago. Remember, Twitter stock is set to be bought out at $54.20 a share from Elon. And right now it's at like 38 and it was lower this morning, but that's quite the gap, Tom, between uh, the current price and the uh, buyout price. And I'm pretty sure Hindenburg actually closed out their short position with Twitter. Wow, that's actually really big if Hindenburg closed that out, yeah. That's going to be some big news, and it's nice to see Twitter coming back up a little bit. I'm glad to see that. You know, if Hindenburg closed out, who knows? Maybe they just put that article out there to try to stir up the pot a little bit. It seems like it definitely worked, Mike, because as we know, Twitter stock has definitely been falling down. Look at the daily chart, actually. It's getting pretty low compared to where we were at. So, it's yeah, it's been brutal, and that IV is all the way back up to like 77% from lows of like 32 34%. So, Pretty crazy to see the uh, volatility coming back like this. Righty, there we go. Uh, well, Tom, do you have any favorite plays in this market or anything you're watching? 
Yeah, you know, stocks did great today overall. You know, I know we talked about Walmart in the beginning and uh, we talked about SPY going down a little bit intraday, but the SPY ended up closing up at highs today, up at 408. So that was great. Even AMC, Mike, was up 10%. Look at the nice movement here, really running up. DraftKings had an amazing day too. I know this one makes us really happy. Rivian was up over 10%. So we had a lot of stocks moving. Even the China plays, Mike. Had a great day. It's like, look at Baba. NIO was awesome today. They were really blasting. So overall, it was just a great day in the market. Um, lots of stocks were booming, Mike. And the only stocks read on my watch list were just Walmart, Target, and a couple of the other slow moving ones. Righty. Very interesting. Well, let's move right into our momentum plays for tomorrow. And with the first one, we have Baba to the upside. Yeah, Baba here. Go ahead and make them break out above $94.50 for tomorrow. Right. And with the next one, we have Redfin also to the upside. Yeah, Redfin. I know we talked about this one yesterday, too. Go ahead and make them break out above 1122. And with the last one, we have Run also to the upside. Yeah, Run did great today. I will say they have a really nice resistance here. Go ahead and make them break out above 2210. Right. We are watching these three plays for potential day trades to the upside tomorrow, only if they break above the levels Tom listed. Before we move on, I just want to give a giant shout out to our member of the day, Great Trade 20. Thank you so much for being such an amazing member of Stocked Up and such a great supporter. Tom and I really appreciate all of your support and activity in the Discord and everything else. So huge shout out to Great Trade 20. Thank you so much for all the support. But Tom, the market is looking pretty good for the most part. It looks like shorts are definitely covering, at least for now. Um, The SPY is back above $400, which is a pretty big support level. And, you know, it's nice to see, especially these growth plays on their way back up. Yeah, it really is. It's great. It's It's been a long time since we've seen continuations up like this, especially out of stocks like Palantir, um, DraftKings, Square, you know, all these stocks have been moving a lot lower lately. Like if we look at the daily chart, these stocks still have a long way to go, but as of right now, they're definitely setting up for some nice continuations. And I really love how a lot of these stocks closed up around some of these amazing resistance levels. I think that we might have a pretty good day on our hands tomorrow if we see some nice breakouts. So definitely keep some of these growth plays on the radar, guys. They are really running up there. Like I said before, even stocks like AMC are starting to come back to life. So that's amazing. The airlines are moving. So yeah, hopefully these stocks can continue, Mike. And it's so far, it's been a great start to the week. I know it's only Taco Tuesday right now, but as we start to keep going here, hopefully this green momentum continues. There we go. And then also, if you trade options, definitely check out that link in the comments and the description down below. Our bot is awesome. If you day trade options, if you swing trade options, we have a bunch of tools that you won't find anywhere else in our Discord. You also get access to a private community. You can chat with Tom and myself all day long. We have order flow bots as well, bonus day trades, you name it, we probably have it. Definitely check it out. It'll be that first link in the description and the comments down below we have a coupon running and you can cancel it anytime it's awesome and you won't find your bots anywhere else so make sure to check it out and besides that let's have a great rest of the week